The Ike add-on is a texturing tool that allows you to project images onto your UV unwrapped objects more easily. It lets you project from a camera or you can drag and drop an image into Blender and project it that way. Just to be transparent, the developer reached out to me about this add-on and after using it for a while, I decided that I liked it and that I wanted to make a video about it. If you'd like to purchase the Ike add-on, it's $15 on Gumroad or $20 on Blender Market if you'd like to support Blender in the process. I have affiliate links for both in the description. Here's a quick summary of what we'll cover. I'll start with setting up some images and projecting them. Then we'll go into the shader editor to set up the file that it outputs, and we'll cover a few options you have when setting it up. Once we get it working, I'll show you a few tricks on how to move your images around, and we'll take a look at the interface and some of the options that it gives us. Then we'll see how the add-on works with UDIM tiles. All right, let's get started. So here I am, I'm using Blender 2.93 for this one, and you can see I just have a scene set up we're going to be projecting our images onto this character right here. For this add-on to work properly, you need to make sure that your object is UV unwrapped. If you're using an asset that you downloaded from the internet and it already has textures, chances are it's UV unwrapped, so you don't really have to worry about that. Another easy way to UV unwrap is just selecting your object, going into edit mode, selecting everything and hitting U, and you can do smart UV project, and that will usually work fine for you. As you can see, this is already unwrapped for us, and I basically just use the Smart UV Project method. The installation process for this is just like any other add-on. You can go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then you want to click the Install button right here, and you just want to navigate to the file that you downloaded. And when you find the Ike add-on, you just want to hit the checkbox, and then it will be installed. And if you uh, come into your viewport and hit N, you'll see that there is a button for it down here now. So let's get started with setting up some images. So the way I prefer to do this is just opening up a window with some images. You can see here I have a whole bunch of PNGs that I made, so they have transparent backgrounds. And you can literally just drag and drop an image right in. And you can see this one is pretty big. And when you do that, it'll make this empty object right here that allows you to move your image around. So we can just hit Alt-G and Alt-R to reset the location and rotation. I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis and just position it in front of our character's face, just for this example. We're just setting this up to project directly onto the face. Another way you can project is from a camera. So I'll add in a camera. And to more easily navigate, you can hit 0 and then hit N to open up the side panel, go to View and lock camera to view. And now when we move around, you can see the camera is following. And we can basically just position this wherever we want, but we need to have our image in here. So to do that, you can select your camera, go down over here to object data properties, the little camera icon, and you wanna check background images right here and then add image. So then we need to open up whatever image we want. I'll just choose like a splatter texture for this one. And once you load it in, I usually just like to change depth to front so that we can see it properly. So depending on the shape of the image that you're using, it's either going to automatically use fit or crop. I know with square images, it seems to want to um, automatically go to crop. Um, and as for rotation and scale, don't use those with this add-on because right now these options are ignored. You just have to set it up this way. The developer does know that these don't work and they might be updated in a future version. So you can basically just set this up wherever you want it to project. And when you have it where you want it, you can just uncheck lock camera to view. So then it stays in the same spot like that. So getting these to project is pretty easy. You basically just want to select your camera and your object, and then select the object that you want these to be projected onto last. And when you do that, go over to the Ike add-on right here, and you just want to set your resolution and your path right here. I have mine set to just go directly to my desktop and you can just hit paint. And it usually takes a second to load. And you can see right now nothing is happening and that's because the uh, image that this output for us isn't set up yet in the shading area. So we can go over to the shading tab right here and this is our material for our character right here. So you just want to bring in an image texture. I'm just doing that with Shift A. And you want to use UV for this so you can plug the UV into the vector and I'm just gonna plug this into the color. And then I'm just gonna click open to navigate to the image that it output for us. I know uh, I set mine to go to the desktop. And you can see right here, I just named it Ike like that. You can open it up and you can see it's already working. But because our background is transparent, it's showing up as black. So an easy way to uh, fix this, the first method is bring in a mix RGB right here. 
And what you want to do is use the alpha like a mask. So you just plug the alpha into the factor. And if this doesn't look right, the color just needs to go into the other color slot. So you can switch these around if it doesn't look right. And you can see that it's working now. And basically, whatever you change this color to is going to be the color of your character like that. So I can just leave mine at white. And you can see these have successfully projected. If you notice any seams like this, I noticed that it usually clears right up if you change this from linear to closest. And now you can't see those seams anymore. So if your object already has a UV map and you want to use this as well as your UV map, that's pretty easy. Basically, instead of this second color, you just want to put your original UV map. So I'm just going to duplicate this image right here and plug this color into color one right here. And I'll just bring in the original image for this character, which I just named blank like that. So you can see this is our original uh, UV image for our character. And the Ike add-on let us project those other images uh, directly over it. And this works because of the transparency. So the way I like to use this add-on is just with these uh, image empties right here. So I'm just going to delete this camera for now because I'm not going to be using that for the rest of the video. And if you want to switch any of the images that you have right here, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is basically just drag and drop onto your image like that, and it should swap over. So now you can see it's the same size, it's in the same place, but we have a different image. So I'm just going to select this to put this image on the front, and then shift select our character. And I'm going to turn the re resolution up a little to 1024 and hit paint. And you can see it updated automatically for us because we already have our material set up and we have auto reload checked. So the way we have this set up, both of these UVs are using the same material and it's basically just um, changing the color like that. Um, if you wanted them to actually have two different materials, instead of a mix RGB, you would use a mix shader. So for this example, I'll just duplicate this principled BSDF with shift D and I'm just going to delete this mix node right here. We can bring in a mix shader and just plug both of our shaders in here like this. And the image that the Ike add-on generated for us, you just want to take the alpha from that and plug it into the factor. And then I'll use the color, plug it into this one, and I'll use the color and plug it into the first one right here. So now we can set different materials for our different images. So if we wanted to, we could like change the roughness. So you can see now that the decal that we put on the front is not reflective at all, but the background still is. Or if we wanted to, we could make this metallic, but you can see that the decal is not metallic. So if you only want to change the color and you don't want to change the material, use a mix RGB. But if you want to actually change the material, use a mix shader. That's the gist of it. So I just hit control Z a bunch to bring this back to what we had before. And I don't want this grid pattern in the background because it's kind of ugly if you ask me. And we'll just use this to control whatever color we want. And I'll just leave this white for now, white and glossy. So I'm just going to go back into the layout tab right here. And I'll just give you some tips on how to move your images around more easily. So if you come up over here to snapping and change this to face, snap to the median and align rotation to target. When you move your image around with G, you can hit control and it will snap to your object like that. So if we wanted to move this around somewhere else, Actually, for this instance, I'm going to load in a separate image. So I have this blank eye image that I'm going to drop in right here. And I'm just going to select this, move it around with G and hit control to snap it like that. And so I want my eye to be maybe somewhere over here. I'll scale it down a little. And when you have it where you want it, you don't really want it to be clipping through like it is right now. Um, because the parts that are clipping through aren't going to project properly. You need it to be further away from your object. That's what these uh, clip values are for, basically. Um, and you can't set the clip to negative. It just doesn't really work that way. So to move this away from your object, you can hit G and then Z twice to move it just along the normal. And you can just pull it out slightly like that. And that should work fine. And so I'm just going to duplicate this, move it out again with G and then Z twice. And I'm going to drag and drop a different image into here. So for this, I'm going to use a pupil like that. And I'm just going to scale this down. I'm going to select both of these and then our object and hit paint. 
and you can see now we have an eyeball on our character. Also, it's worth noting that there are different blending options. So the way I have this set up, there are multiple layers and they're projecting on top of each other. And I have it set to overlay for that. If you're trying to blend colors and you want them to like actually um, mix with each other, you might want to set this to something more like average. Also, if at any time you want this to be higher resolution, all you have to do is change these values and then reproject it. So if I wanted to, I could change this to like 40, 96, something like that. And it will take a little longer when you hit the paint button, but you'll see it will be much higher quality. So it's much smoother now like that. And if you don't want to be changing your resolution around too much, you can just set this to where you want it and then change the percentage value. So you can project it at a lower quality by just changing the percentage. One other thing that can help set up these images is uh, hitting shift and seven on your numpad. And I just have to get rid of my floor and my wall so we can see properly. And this will align your view directly to your image like that. So you can see exactly where it's going to project. So I can just hit G and then Z twice to pull it out of our character a little. And this is exactly where it will project onto our object. And once again, I just did that with shift and seven on the numpad. And it might bring you into orthographic mode like this. You just you can just hit five to get out of that. All right, now I'm just gonna go into time-lapse mode and just set up our character to make it a little more interesting. Okay, so I have all of my images set up as you can see, and they're all basically just laid um, on top of each other like that. Um, so you can just select all of your images. When you have a lot, I like to just select them all in the outliner like that. You can keep them in a collection if you wanna keep them more neat. Select your character or your object, and then you can just hit paint. And then I can hide all of these over here. And we can see it projected perfectly. One thing that's really nice about this app, um, we can go over to the UV edi editing tab and take a look at the image that it's outputting. You can see that some of these images that I'm projecting are going across multiple UV islands, and we don't really have to worry about that when we're using this add-on. If this was something that I was trying to make in Photoshop, this would be a nightmare because you'd have to figure out like where the eye needs to attach or you would just have to more carefully uh, unwrap your object so that you can put things in specific UV islands. And being able to just use images and project them leads to a much more intuitive and enjoyable experience, for me at least. So next, let's talk about UDIM tiles. For that, I have a separate object. It's basically just the same character, except we have it set up to use UDIM tiles. You can just set this to UDIM. So this is what it looks like. Basically, we can assign different portions of our mesh to use different UV images, and they can even have different resolutions. So you can see if we look close at our model, you can see that the head is pretty clear. You can zoom in pretty close and there's no pixelation. The body, right now, it is a little lower resolution. And then you can really notice on the hands and the feet um, are much lower resolution. And so these are all separated uh, into different UV islands. And this add-on also works for that, but there are some tricks to it. I'm gonna go back into layout mode right here, and I'm just going to set up all the images that we wanna project. So I'm pretty much just going to do the same thing we did before, um, except I want there to be um, images projecting onto each separate UV island. So I have to put something on my hand and on my feet. And this is basically just a temporary thing that uh, I use to get it working. Like we did before, just select all of your images, then select your object last, shift select it, and hit paint. I'm just gonna lower this resolution to something like 512 and hit paint. And once again, we're gonna have to set all of these up, um, but we already know how to do that, so it should be quick. We can go into the UV editor right here, and I know these output for me on the desktop, so I'll just navigate to the desktop. You can see right here, because it's using uh, UDIM tiles, 
um, it's outputting with this suffix 1001 for the first tile, 1002 for the second, and so on. You can see we have four tiles. So to get this working, it's as easy as going to the UV editor and basically just dragging and dropping one of those tiles over here. And you can see it'll just open up all of them for us. And it has this image in here named uh, Ike1001. So that's the image that we need to set up in the shading area. So we can go over to the shading tab. You can see right here, I already have my UDIM uh, tile set up. And it's basically just an image texture, but down here you set it to UDIM tiles instead of single image. So we can just switch this over. And I remember my image was called Ike1001. And you can see it's working now. I just have to uh, do the trick with the mix RGB right here. So you can plug the color in to color two and the alpha into the factor. And now that we have this set up, I'll show you the power of using UDIM tiles. So if we wanted, we could make the resolution for all of the things on our face higher. So I can just select all of these right there and then select our body last. And I'll just turn this up to something higher like 4096. And now that it's projected, I'll just hide all of these. And you can see that our face is nice and smooth and crisp. And these other ones are still low resolution. So this is good for if you have certain parts of your character or parts of an object that you know people aren't gonna, you're not gonna be looking at too closely. You know, something like the face, you're probably going to be getting a lot closer to than like a character's foot. So we can still leave these ones pretty low resolution. If we try to not use UDIM tiles, we just go back to our original one. It's not going to work correctly. Instead of using a different image for each tile, it'll use the same image. So it's starting to display on multiple islands that you don't want. So if you're going to use UDIM, I recommend doing it the way that I showed you, because if you use a single image, it's not really going to work. All right, that's it for this one. If you like what you saw, click the links in the description to check out the Ike add-on. Thanks for watching and have a good one.